Hey guys, welcome to Data Track, your one stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. In today's video, we will look at products MBD. So, MBD is the vector representation of entities, it's used across various domains. We will look into that. And uh, how are this embeddings generated in the first place? So, we will define a neural network architecture entry in these embeddings. And uh, also to generate the embeddings, which is a vector representation of the entities, we need huge amount of data. So we will be training uh, it in 1.02 billion rows, which is massive, uh, summing up to 14 to 16 GPs of data at the end, once we have covered the theoretical part. So let's get started. So what are embeddings and product embeddings? The basic idea of embedding is to represent the object in a space where proximity means two objects are similar. And product embeddings is the low dimensional vector space representation of e-commerce products like milk, bread, butter, eggs, etc. Embeddings can also be created for different entities across domains like for hospital, hospitality domains these embeddings could be customer and hotels. For financial domains the embeddings can be of the assets and for search domain the embeddings can be of the queries. And once we have these high quality product embeddings we can utilize it for finding similarity to find the substitute item. Given the embedding of a product, we can find which product is most similar to it and that will be the substitute product. And embeddings are powering recommendation systems in one tower, two tower, three tower kind of models where uh, you have uh, two towers, one of the user, one of the product and you can find uh, that which embeddings of the users are most similar to the product embeddings and those will become the uh, recommendation for that user. It can also go as an input feature to various classification and regression models wherever the product attributes are needed. So the question arises, okay, embeddings are good, but how to find them? Finding good embeddings, capturing the most suited representation of the object or entity is an area of cutting edge research. And researchers are doing that by using tremendous amount of data for training these embeddings and using more and more sophisticated neural network architectures and ideas. For this mini project, we will use an idea from world to web with some extra information available of the product which we will call as the side information to create decent product embeddings. And finally, we will also do a sanity check on the quality of these embeddings. So world to web, quickly revisiting because we will use the idea of world to web to generate product embeddings. World to web is an NLP based method to efficiently create word embeddings and has been around since 2013. But in addition to the utility as a word embedding method, that is an NLP natural language tracing uh, algorithm, its concept has shown to be effective in creating high quality embeddings and boost recommendation engines and make sense of sequential data even in non-language tasks. So it's so useful that the idea of it has been used across uh, other non-language tasks as well to generate embeddings. So how word to word works is, the goal is simply to learn word vectors that maximize the probability of predicting missing word given the context. For example, uh, have a good day or have a great day. Let's take the second sentence, have a and good is missing. The word to web should generate embeddings for all the words that that is, the generated embedding should be good enough to maximize the probability of the missing word. And in this process, it will, uh, where it is trying to predict the missing word generating the embedding, the, as the model become more and more accurate, the embeddings are getting trained which are of high quality and which represents the actual uh, meaning of the word. So, when we have trained such a model for huge amount of sentences, we will find that great and good are similar words because have a great day or have a good day or have a awesome day. All these words are used in similar context. So, the embeddings will learn that in that vector representation, uh, these words are similar. So, that's the idea of word to web that given the context word uh, generate embeddings which are able to maximize the probability of the missing word. So how we will use that idea in our products embedding? Like word to web we will also use the context information to find product embeddings. But what will be the context in our case? In our case the items ordered together which are part of the same order will play the role of context. For example here the order id 0 these are the product ids. Order ID 1, these are the product IDs. So we will take an order and all the products which are ordered in that order as the context. We will also use side information to further boost our embeddings which will be like for a product what is the ID, where is it kept, 
so that uh, we know similar items will stay at aisles and also department ID in the store that given the context of the product department like is the vegetable product, meat product or health and wellness product so this will, we will use the department information as well which is available one can also utilize site information like the available product description like uh, chocolate sandwich cookies, all season salt, robust, golden, unsweetened or long tea one can use the description of the product as well but for this mini project we will skip that we will just uh, use the site information that is aisle id, department id and the context which is coming from the products which are ordered together but I will give you a framework in which you can easily add more uh, components which, which will represent the other side information so data science enthusiasts can build on the idea and uh, further improve it we will talk at the end like what all improvement are possible so finally let's refine our approach we will frame the approach as a binary classification problem two products P1 and P2 which are part of the same order will go as an input with the target variable as 1 because they were ordered together so they are uh, part of the same context two or two products part of same order will go as an input to predict one that is they are part of the same context similarly we will also have a randomly drawn two products px and py forming pair that will go as an input with target as zero uh, so that we have both positive and negative sample and this technique of using two randomly products to uh, as a target zero is called negative sampling there can be better negative sampling approaches like two products which are rarely ordered together should go as zero and all but here we will just use two randomly selected products in this way we will have our training and validation data set so uh, just summarizing what we are doing all the products which are ordered together let's say four products those four products share a context so four pair we will create four c2 number of rows that is product 1, product 2, product 1, product 3, product 1, product 4, product 2, product 3, product 2, product 4, product 3 and product 4 all these are ordered together so they will go as an input two products at a time with a target variable 1 because they are ordered together now also let's look at the neural network architecture through which the above model will be trained and once the model is trained, once we have a highly accurate model the embedding will also gain, uh, get trained in the process so it's like we are training a classification model and as soon as the model become more and more accurate the train embeddings also automatically gets trained in the process in the data set the sequence in which products were ordered is also available that product 1 2 3 and 4 they were ordered one i mean they were added to the cart one after another so this sequence information can also be used in a sequence to sequence kind of model to generate even better embeddings but we won't you do that here we will keep things simple but data science enthusiasts can build on this idea as well to improve the embeddings and the work further I will have uh, one slide at the end that what all improvements are possible but for now let's keep things simple so this is how our neural network architecture will look like two products P1 and P2 will go as an input let's assume they were part of the same order then for product 1 the product embedding layer will generate the embedding which is the green part for product 2 again the product embedding layer the embedding layer is common it will generate the embedding and we will get the green uh, uh, neurons or vectors for product 2 similarly we will also use the side information which is the aisle embedding and the department embedding and they also uh, the, the aisle embedding is represented by the red color and the department embedding by the yellow color so for product 1 we will have the product embedding aisle embedding and department embedding concatenated for product 2 again we will have product embedding aisle embedding department embedding concatenated and then we will have a multiplication layer which will multiply the two vectors element by element and we will have this uh, neurons which will pass through further dense layers and again through another dense layer and finally there will be a single neural which will be sigmoid activated that is it will give the probability if P1 and P2 are the same uh, ordered products that, that is they were part of the same orders the target should be ideally 1 and two products which are randomly drawn uh, the target should be 0 in that way we will train our model so next we will look at the practical session that how can we generate these embeddings we will do the data preparation in one file and we will do the modeling in another file and once we have the embeddings with us we will also do a sanity check or quality check of it so uh, let's go to the practical session 
So here we have used Instacart dataset which is freely available and uh, you can just go to the Kaggle notebook and search for this dataset you will get it. So the dataset has multiple files like department.csv, order product train.csv, order product prior.csv, orders, product files. We will just use the files which are useful and important for us. And once this dataset is created, we will have uh, billions of rows in our dataset. So the first file is product.csv which is important, which has the product IDs and the product names and as well as the side information that where this product is kept, which I and which department it belongs to like meat, grocery, health and wellness and so on. So there are around 50,000 items or products for which we will generate the embeddings and the dataset has two files for orders which is prior and train orders.csv and why there are two separate files because the actual task in the competition was something else but we are uh, using these files to train a classification model to generate high quality embedding so what we will do is we will just uh, concatenate them and make it a single data set so the orders product train.csv which has the order id and its individual product which was part of that order and the sequence in which it was added to the card so we have the order product prior.csv where the information is the order and which product was part of it and also the sequence in which it was added to the card we want a single file so we will concatenate them to make a single file which so the number of orders are around 3.3 million and the data set is of size 33 million because it has all the products uh, given order so it's a order cross product data set next what we did was we did some eda just took some 5000 orders and checked how many products on an average are there in per order so there are around 10.5 products per order just it's a eda or analysis so now let's we know what our approach is so let's create the data set in a way that will be useful for our approach so we know there are 3.34 million unique orders so those are lot of orders so what we will do we will process 50,000 orders at a time the reason uh, why only 50,000 orders at a time because we need to create an NC2 data set for each product P1, P2, P3 order together we need to create P3C2 number of rows P1 with P2, P1 with P3, P2 with P3 and so on so that's why we will process 50,000 orders at a time the idea is simple two products which are part of the same order will go as an input with uh, target as one and for each product in the order we will pick a randomly uh, selected product and we will have it with a label of zero so we have equal number of positive and negative samples uh, yeah so that's see the uh, co uh, code we are picking 50,000 orders at a time so basically we are processing 50,000 orders at a time and uh, we, we are doing a self join with uh, the order with itself so that uh, so that we can create uh, a row where two products part of the same product can go as target one so uh, df orders compressed is joined again with df orders compressed on the order id and uh, we have made sure that two products they don't appear with itself because p1 p1 is not a right row so we have filtered that out and we have uh, set, selected the label as one because this is the positive example similarly for uh, every product we have selected a randomly selected product for every product in the order we have selected a randomly uh, selected or randomly picked product which will go as a label 0 and what we have done here is very crucial what we have done in here in this uh, one line we have uh, while saving the uh, data in the file we have uh, suffered the data that will be very helpful while training because it won't be like first uh, or set of orders are positive next set of orders are negative that won't happen it will just suffer it it will make uh, training harder and patterns hard to learn for the model and there won't be any overfitting or any other issues so we have suffered and stored it and uh, since we are processing only 50,000 orders at a time we will have multiple files created it will take around 30, 25 minutes for you and at the end of it you will have 1.2 billion rows with 14 plus gb's uh, data size and uh, there will be around 66 to 67 uh, files created and uh, yeah so this is a data preparation stage we have created our uh, billion record data set which sums to uh, gbs of uh, gbs in size next let's go to the modeling part and i will add the link of all these notebooks in the description section and also 
some more videos that I have made in past which could be helpful uh, as a context for this uh, embeddings that also I will add in the description section. So uh, now I am reading all the files. You can see all the files which will create as a part of data preparation have been read. There are 67 files. Now we have to create the embeddings. So we will also use the side information, right? Which is IL ID and department ID. So we need to have that as well. So we'll use the side information, which is IL ID, where the product is kept in the store. So that's we know similar items, say IELTS and department ID as well, because uh, so that we can have the context where the product is coming from, vegetable or meat or health or wellness, which department it's coming from. And also we can uh, in the data set the side information, which is product description, is available for. But for this mini project we have ignored it but you can definitely add it and uh, build on top of it to improve your uh, products and bedding. So we have uh, read the product uh, IDs and created a map where I can store the department ID and the IL IDs. For every product as a key I know the department ID IL ID. Why? Because I will use it as a side information. We will see that. And this is our neural network architecture where two products will go, there will be embedding layer, the embeddings will come up and then we will multiply and have few more dense layer followed by the final uh, output layer where we will try to predict the probability. So let's see how we can code it. Very simply we can code it using Keras. So uh, the first input is the product ID, second input is the department ID, third input is the IL ID. The, similarly for the second product and there is a layer of product embedding there is a layer of department embedding, there is a layer of IL embedding. It's, it will be common for both the products. So first product input I will pass through the embedding layer uh, and get the encoded uh, output which is which is actually uh, this part, this part I will get it. So yeah, so I have passed it through the embedding layer to get the uh, encoded uh, so yeah, I have passed it to get the encoded output, right, both for product ID, department ID and dial ID for first product, encoded output for second product, uh, product ID, department ID, dial ID, then I will concatenate it because we know we will concatenate the uh, product uh, embedding, dial embedding and department embedding for first product and for second product and then we do a uh, element wise multiplication that is the multiply layer. And then we have few more sets of tense layers, finally with the sigmoid layer and uh, all of this has to be trained uh, with, uh, with, with these inputs which is product ID, department ID, IL ID for first product, uh, second products, product ID, department ID, IL ID and the output is the target variable that we want to predict which is the probability that whether they were part of the same product or not or simply we can say whether they were part of the same context or not and the loss used is binary cross entropy, the optimizer is atom and the matrix is accuracy. And we can also see the summary that this is the summary of our, uh, this is the summary of our model, the architecture. And we can also visualize the architecture. If you can see here, the, uh, the three input layers which is of first product, three input layer second product, pass through embedding layer of product department I and we concatenate them, we multiply element wise we pass it through few more dense layer and final dense layer is the uh, classification output. Next what we will do is uh, we will get all of our data set which are the files and uh, now next now this is very important part how we will train for 1.2 billion rows which is 67 files summing up to 14 plus dbs data of that volume can't fit the can't fit in memory so what we will do is we will train it train in batches. So there is a uh, data generator utility in Keras from which what we can do is we can read the data in batches from the disk and train it. So we have kept the batch size of 8k at a time 8000 uh, batch size will be selected and uh, uh, the batch will be created on the fly and this clever approach of data set creation uh, uh, we will use. And one more thing is that we are able to read 8000 batches and train because if you remember in the data preparation stage when we created the file, we had shuffled the data. So there won't be any issues like overfitting or there is a pattern in the batches because every batch will be randomly shuffled because in the file creation we already shuffled it. 
and uh, we will also reserve 15% of the data for validation in each and every individual batch uh, because for the data set generated utility in Keras, the validation and training batches should be of equal size so for each batch we will uh, keep aside 15% uh, of the data for validation and uh, 85 we will use for the training so let's look at how we use the data set generator we will need this function with what it will do is it will read all the files all throughout my data set it will read all the files and uh, pick 8000 uh, rows which is the batch size and in that 8000 rows it will keep 6500 which is 6500 for training and 1500 for validation so you can see batch size into 1 minus validation split because validation split was 0 0.15 so 1 minus validation split will be 0 0.80 it will keep those many rows for the training and similarly I have one uh, validation function which will take the remaining 15% uh, of the data so how I have done that cleverly is uh, I, I am taking from the start till uh, 6500 and here what I am doing here I am taking from uh, 6500 till end of the batch so in that way I will have these generator functions and uh, yeah so this is the train generator which will you get the batches on fly from generate batch train function and validation generator it will get the uh, batches for validation on the fly from generate batches validation function and it will have a yield so whenever you use a uh, this uh, whenever you, you use a data set generator utility in Keras you need to have that yield function in the uh, uh, instead of return you need to have that yield thing and uh, this is how the batches will be generated the fly apex, apex count I have kept 100 apex count basically means how many times the whole data set will be passed to the model it will be passed 100 times and also I have put some checkpoints that whenever the model's accuracy doesn't improve in the validation set stop training so that it doesn't overfit and uh, yeah so we will start the training and you can see that it starts from validation accuracy of 58% and at the end it uh, goes till it goes till 65% so finally it starts with in the first epoch 58% in the final epoch 65% so uh, you can train the model in such a way that if you are able to improve the accuracy your quality of embeddings will also increase so uh, as data science enthusiasts can uh, product provide more information to the uh, model or have some other neural network architecture such that accuracy improves and if the accuracy improves your embedding quality will also improve so uh, now what we will do is we will have we have this architecture right now it's already trained the model is trained and this embedding layer is the product embedding layer which is what we are interested on so if we pass our products through these embeddings we will just get the product embedding so that is what we will do we will we have just uh, chop off that layer that is the first embedding layer we have chopped off that sixth layer if you see 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 this is the product embedding layer we have chopped off the sixth layer and passed all the ids product ids from 1 to max number of ids which is like 49.6k and for each product we have got 64 uh, dimension embedding now we have the product embeddings yay uh, next thing what we want to do is we want to find the similar products right for that we will use annoy which is uh, a approximate nearest neighbor algorithm now how annoy works i have a detailed video in my channel i will add the link of it in the description section also approximate nearest neighbor can be solved using a concept of product quantizer like google's scanan or facebook fires library uses this concept and many other libraries uses this concept i have a detailed video on that as well the link of that also I will add in the description section. So here we will use a simple uh, uh, ANN uh, library which is Annoy. So Annoy, the idea is that for uh, first in Annoy we create trees. Uh, so the library will do that for you. I have put it 100 trees and then it will create the Annoy index and for each product it will search the similar product. So after uh, uh, running it very quickly because it's approximate nearest neighbor it's very fast you will for every product you will get the nearest product which is the closest product uh, so yes finally we have got it we have trained the embeddings and we have for each product we have got the similar products next we will do the sentry check of the quality of these embeddings so what I did I downloaded the embeddings in my local data and I was looking at it so I will show you the results uh, the results can be improved but if we see it is able to capture the pattern 
given the product id dry loose oil uh, it's recommending lavender relaxing body oil or uh, it's recommending which are the closest items which are lavender relaxing body oil 100% organic flax oil neem oil body lotion for protein and fiber bar it's showing uh, chocolate uh, fudge protein bar and chocolate almond high protein fiber bar energy bar and protein bar and so on for antibacterial hand wash it's suggesting via sea butter moisturizing liquid hand soap for organic celebrities many organic products are coming as similar for uh, organic roasted sweetened snack some other snacks are coming as similar products uh, vegetarian green meat sausages uh, you can see chicken small size chicken jerky chips cookie and other chicken products uh, sausages are all coming up Similarly, for banana and sweet potato, organic thickening wrappers, uh, some ice cream sandwiches and salad, eat all these things are coming. And uh, so, similarly for coconut chocolate chip energy bar, other energy bar, toffee bar, sea salt bar, protein bar, caramel bites, bars, and all these things are coming up. And now for juices, apple juice, some energy drink, guava water, and uh, some hundred percent Colum uh, Colombian ground coffee is coming up. And also, I will show you one more interesting result, uh, which was uh, somewhere down below. Yes, so raw protein women uh, probiotic 85. It looks like some capsule, right? Again, some other capsule, uh, which is protein 150 billion capsules, and uh, one other protein thing is coming up. And similarly, for cuff mats, when you have cold and cuffs, cuff mats, you can see other cold relief uh, things are coming up. And again, for some capsules, other uh, one mg tablets are coming up. So in this way we can see that the quality of embeddings are looking good. Definitely it can be improved. You can improve the model and hence improve the embeddings further. So finally just one last part let's look at which is how can you further improve it. So it can be improved by utilizing the available description of the product which we ignored. You can also use that as a side information the description of the product. There are multiple ways in which you can use it. A better negative sampling approach can be used. For now, we just pick two products which randomly and put it as a negative sample. You can improve upon it, you can read upon it that what are the better negative sampling approaches. And also in the data set, the sequence information was available that if two if the products were ordered, uh, what is the order in which they went uh, they went to the cart, like product one and then product two went into cart and then product three went into, into the cart. So this sequence information of the product can be used to train a sequence to sequence model and generate even better embeddings and finally definitely there are more sophisticated neural network architectures available these days because it's a uh, area of cutting edge research so you can even try more sophisticated neural network architectures so that's in this video where we learned uh, this is a complete uh, tutorial on what embeddings are how it's used in different domains how you can train your own embeddings and what are the possible improvements you can do so hope you like the video please like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned for more such content bye